look at some common attacks from side control. The first one, someone attempts to cross face you, you're going to pin the wrist to the mat. You're going to use your head to control the elbow. You're going to slightly twist as you go to hyperextend the arm. Another very common attack from here is the Americana. And we're going to do this Americana a little bit different. We're trapping there, it's a great MMA position. But when we go to finish, we're going to use a neck crank to help finish as well. That neck crank combination with the Americana makes it very effective. This person decides they're going to hide their arm this time. So we're going to left, shoot our other hand through, grab their arm to help maintain control, then switch our hands to the proper Kimura grip. To finish, we're going to step over with a big step and finish the lock. Now this next one, we're going to go for arm bars. This is a great technique to use. It's often uh, small details are overlooked. Very heavy pressure with the right arm checking the hips. Your knee needs to be on the mat and you need to push their head between your legs, not simply on their neck. As you go to armbar, the knee on the inside stays very high. Often as you start doing this, the initial setup is easy to get to, but people get wise to this and they really defend it well. Whenever you feel like you're just not going to be able to maintain enough control of their arm to finish the armbar, you're going to switch off to a Kimura. You're going to lift your leg to help maintain control. Go for the Kimura grip behind the back and the same style finish. Now, a few little tips to breaking the grips and stuff. Whenever you get the Kimura style grip on the person in that position, you're gonna pull their hand rapidly away from their body and then up behind their back. This time we're gonna get the Kimura style grip and we're gonna go back into the armbar. For some reason we've decided to bail on the Kimura and go into the armbar. We're going to look at an arm crush here. Now this is hard for a lot of people, but I'm going to explain a detail that will really help it work. If you slide your hand down the inside of your arm, you'll feel a bony structure right at your elbow. That's where my wrist is at. It's pushing, it's hooked under that bony structure. My other hand, my left hand, is ready to reclaim his elbow if he moves it. By having my wrist locked underneath that bone structure at the elbow, it gives me great control over that. Now, if someone hides their arm, this is a Kimura style, a modified Kimura style lock. It is a great lock. I've actually had my elbow or my shoulder dislocated with that one. I can tell you, it is very effective. This is another way to get that same uh, modified Kimura style lock. Now, we're going to attack the inside arm. A very important detail here is to use your elbow. You're going to use your elbow to push down at the wrist. You never want to reach back too much with your hand. Now, as we control here, we're going to step go back and push on the shoulder. This is huge. Uh, people often lift the hips, but they don't push on the control shoulder. Now this, watch how you use the control, or I'm using the control of my left arm, and staying tight to his arm. That keeps him from extending his arm so and easy. And finish the lock. This next <coughs> submission is uh, a little bit of a different, it's a neck crank. It can also be a choke. You're going to use uh, your gable grip on the inside of his neck and really strong shoulder pressure to finish the choke. Now this is just a baseball choke or a bookkeeper choke. I've actually heard it called like seven different things. Now we're gonna switch off to a guillotine or a guillotine and we're gonna do it by kind of faking going for like a north-south choke. Now we're gonna go for a crucifix. <coughs> and on the previous uh, guillotine or any time that you wanna go for uh, submissions, if you can break the person's posture, it helps greatly. Notice how I'm hooked there on the inside of his armpit. I'm going to use that a lot of times with my north-south stuff. This is just a setup for a crucifix. Another thing that you can often hit, especially in MMA, is this style crucifix. Now, you have to decide if you can or can't do it. And on things like this, always bail before uh, giving up position. Now, this is one of the arm bars that is actually decent percentage once you get good at it. Now at this position I'm really driving my knee into his armpit. I'm not falling back but I'm using good pressure to control his arm. I'm controlling the elbow. Let's finish the lock. This is an Americana style lock that is often gave up when somebody puts their arm on the inside trying to shrimp in. And finish the lock. We're going for a postage stamp style position here. As the postage stamp, if you do work this position, get familiar with controlling both elbows. 
and how to use your shoulder. Notice I'm using my right arm with some uh, shoulder pressure on his chin. Whenever I decide to go for the uh, postage stamp arm bar, we're going to switch our grip and go back pretty slow and methodically. Uh, another thing that is often overlooked with this postage stamp position is a nice little uh, neck crank. I'm going to slide back and pull back. I want to make sure that I keep him off balance the entire time. When someone does try to shrimp in from uh, side control, often they shrimp in and you can shelve and capture their leg. Notice I catch his leg here and now his ankle becomes trapped. I'm going to go for a little inside and uh, heel hook here and by pushing myself forward. The next video I do, video I do is going to be entrances from side control when someone attempts to shrimp in and attacking the legs from side control.